Ryan DiNovellis back with another Tri-State College Basketball Podcast, Back to School Edition, and we are at the RWJ Barnabas Rutgers Athletic Performance Center here on the beautiful campus of Rutgers University, and that means Steve Peichel is my guest. Coach, you got quite a setup here. I mean, uh, we built a beautiful facility. It's uh, two and a half years old right now. Um, I think it's the best practice and all-purpose uh, facility in the country. We have our offices here on yeah. the fourth floor. The gym is on the third floor. Our locker rooms, our film room. Um, on the first floor, we have all of our medical training and hot baths and the cold baths. And on the second floor is all our nutrition. So where we eat and how our guys uh, take care of their bodies, you know, through nutrition. So it really is one-stop shopping here and great brand new facility. I got an outside deck here oh, overlooking. It's beautiful. Yeah, it really is uh, nice. And it obviously... It caters to our players, which is a great thing, right. and, and uh, 24 hours a day, it's open. It, it is a necessity, and, and what, what student-athlete wouldn't you know, see this and be impressed by it? I'm impressed by it. So um, the news this week, Coach, uh, the big news this week is, is the Big Ten schedule is out, and you know, what are your thoughts as, as you kind of you know, break it down? Because I know you're taking it one game at a time, but hey, we all look at the schedule. <laughs> you know... It's late in September, so my thoughts are right now, we better get hotels, we better get airplanes, we better do everything else, because right. uh, five minutes from now, we, we start the season. But uh, TV takes a long time, finally, right. you know, get the schedule out. And um, we played for the last four years, a top 40 schedule, obviously. We're doing that again. Um, you know, we opened Illinois, has been a top 20 team. Uh, then we're on the road at Iowa, at Ohio State, who brought in the number one recruiting class and has everybody returning, so... Um, you know, a real difficult schedule. Again, we sold out every game here at, at Jersey Mike's Arena, which I'm excited about. And uh, we'll be fighting for our lives from the opening tip at the beginning of the year. A lot of exciting basketball. Excited about this year's journey. Yeah, no doubt. And, and you know, from a fan's perspective or a journalist's perspective, I look at, hey, okay, Michigan State, one game. It's at Michigan State. Obviously, you've developed quite a, you know, rivalry with them and a lot of teams. Purdue home and home, so you get them here as well at Jersey Mike's Arena and some epic games with them. Um, you know, two with Maryland. I mean, it, it's, it's a gauntlet at times. <laughs> Our league is, you know, people just try to explain it to people all the time. We, we have passionate fan bases. You go on the road, every game sold out, um, night in and night out. And now we're adding USC, UCLA. Washington and Oregon. So, like, tell me four more. You know, if, if you don't have a migraine headache, you know, when you look at this schedule, you certainly will. Great coaches, different styles, really tough venues, uh, huge fan bases. I mean, we played Purdue the last two. They've been number one. Right. We play them. That's probably one of the toughest venues in the country to play at. We have to play at Seton Hall, a huge rival, and then Princeton. Um, start the season, Georgetown with Ed Cooley, who's going to do a fantastic job at Georgetown. I love that. We're, you know, we're I playing Mississippi that. State and NCAA tournament. You know, like so, every game, you know, a monster. And uh, you know, I'm still trying to make this the hardest, you know, place in America to play. You know, uh, Jersey Mike's Arena. It's getting harder and harder to get opponents to come here. But um, you know, we have a great venue. Great for students, great for fans of basketball. And they can come and see Tom Izzo one night, Fran McCaffrey the next night, you know, Jawan Howard at Michigan, the job right. he does. I mean, our league is just full of great coaches. Matt Painter at Purdue, you know, great coaches, great rivalries, and uh, great basketball. I love the fact, obviously, I, I hope that Seton Hall uh, Rutgers game continues, you know, kind of like Cincinnati and Xavier. Uh, you know, non-conference opponents who, who play each other. I love that. Um, Princeton this year, you've added that. What did it take to get that together? And wow, opening the year with, with a team that, you know, won the Ivy League. Yeah. I mean, nobody understands scheduling. You know, it's, it's not easy. It's, you know, first of all, you're, you have academic schedules. Um, you know, we have final exams. You can't schedule games during the reading week right. leading up to it. Other schools have different reading and final exam times. You got television, you got home venues, you got away venues. Um, it's really hard, you know, and, and do they have the date that you need? Do they have, and as you fill up your dates, then there's only certain dates that you can play games. Um, so it's really tough, you know, scheduling. So we, we had an opening available and, and, you know, neutral site. Obviously, Princeton's a terrific program and, and uh, the tradition there is, is great. But uh, we always want to play 
you know, Seton Hall. Shah has been awesome. He wants to keep the rivalry going. Um, you know, we had a break one year in it, but thankfully he wants to continue playing it. And, and uh, you know, I think it's great for New Jersey basketball and it's, it's great for both our programs. So um, we're excited. Great, uh, great, great stuff. Uh, I know the fans are excited about that. So you came off the trip from Africa. Um, everybody's healthy. Uh, word is, and, and you know, in, in talking with people and, and reading and seeing uh, what transpired, you, you, you're playing more up-tempo, all right? Uh, not that you didn't want to in the past, but is that accurate to, to say that this team will be a little more up-tempo this year? Yeah, I mean, I, I always think every year you assess, you know, your players, you know, and uh, how can you win? When I took this job, everyone wants to, you know, how are you going to play? Well, you don't just plug guys in and, you know, play you you look at your team and what are your strengths what are your weaknesses and um you know this year's group is very athletic so we're, we're fortunate we got a lot of good athletes um they they, they want to get up and down the court but we wanted to get up and down the court you know with ron harper and geo baker and and those guys too so um you know you try to win every game and uh, are you do you want to get in a foot race with michigan state every time you play them i, I think you better think about that teams that like to do that Remember Jim Calhoun at UConn saying, let's get into a race with us at UConn. That's right up our alley. Oh, my God. I think sometimes you got to you know, decide in the course of a game how you can win and what you can do. But, uh, you know, we, we got really good. I think we got good, good young talent. I think we got really good athleticism. Obviously, having Cliff back, who's the most athletic center in the country, um, coming back to graduate, which is a refreshing in this day and age, too, yes. a refreshing reason. But he's come back and proved. So you got a big guy that can run. We'll have Mawat Mag back. He's one of the better athletes. Uh, Gavin Griffiths out of, out of Connecticut, one of the really good athletes. Jermichael Davis, we've added him. Uh, Noah Fernandez, you know, we, we got some good athleticism from Derek Simpson. Uh, Antoine Wolfhawk, one of the most improved guys in our program, really good athlete. You, you know, we got Oscar uh, back to Palmquist, who I'm excited about, good athlete. So, you know, we're going to try to play that way, too. But the really good teams don't let you just run up and down and get layups. Right, so, right. you know, you got to be able to live in both worlds. And, and I think this group can do that. And I'm excited about the potential to run and press and do some different things. But I'm also excited about, you know, some games you got to sit down and guard. And you got to, you know, throw the ball into Cliff and, and, and make it a half-court grind. I'm hoping we're able to do, you know, both of those. Last year, uh, listen, statistics speak for themselves. Rutgers has, has struggled at times with a three-point shot. You relied so heavily on, on Cam Spencer, and boy, I mean, he carried you to a couple of, you know, a few great wins. Uh, it seems like you've improved uh, the amount of shooters that you have or the shooters that you had on the roster have gotten better. Did you assess that coming out of the, the trip to Africa? I mean, we shot the ball really well in Africa. This group seems to have, we have more options, you know, to shoot the ball. Um, you know, again, I think it's every year you try to, you know, every year you could pick a stat, you know. So uh, we got better at free throw shooting. The year before, we were right. a terrible free yes. throw shooting team. So every year you could pick, pick a stat. What we did have last year was the National Defensive Player of the Year and, and, and Caleb McConnell. We had Paul Mulcahy, who was a bit of a grinder. And, um, you know, Cam Spencer was obviously the best shooter in that group. Um, we now have Andre Hyatt, who had a fantastic Africa and shoots no the ball at the highest level. Thankful he's back. Um, we have a kid, uh, Antonio Chol, who we redshirted last year. He's one of our best shooters. Palmquist come back. He can really shoot the ball. Gavin gives us a big-time shooter. Noah Fernandez is, is, is a really good and proven shooter in the Atlantic 10, played at UMass. So we got more guys, you know, Derek Simpson didn't shoot the ball great stat-wise, but he's a really good shooter, and he'll be much improved stat-wise this year. Uh, but we also, Cliff is a better passer out of the post, and hopefully he's throwing the ball to really good shooters. So um, this year's team, I, so far, in, in a small snapshot, we're more athletic. We can really shoot the three. Can we defend? Like, people, you win games on that end of the floor. Like, we lost a national defensive player of the year. Like, let's not forget, he would lock people up. So... Um, you know, so hopefully those stats don't decline, you know what I mean? So as a coach, you're always worried about a lot of different things. You got to do a lot of good things to win. Uh, hopefully this group will be able to put that together, but I'm excited about the challenge. This group has been great to coach, great approach, coachable kids, and uh, really good athletes. So when you, the best athlete of them all is, is Cliff Amore. 
to get him hopefully where he wants to go to the next level. Obviously, you want to win and help prepare him. Um, will there be a situation where we're... You know, he shoots more on the outside. Is that going to be part of his arsenal this year? I mean, tell me who we're playing, and I'll tell you what the thing is, okay. too. That's part of what you're doing. What's the big guy doing around him? Well, Zach Eady, yeah, he can go out on the perimeter and do that. But some of the other big guys in this league, like, that's not an advantage for us. But, um, you know, Cliff has improved in every area. Every season, he's gotten better in every statistic. And most proud of, as a freshman, he led the league in fouls per minute. That's what he led the league in last year. First team all defensive guy in the Big Ten. So he's one of the top five defenders in the league. His freshman year was one of the top followers in the country. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So he flipped the switch completely. And that's screen coverages. That's all the different things you have to do as a big guy. The past screen coverage would meant a foul. Now he's staying in the game. He's one of the best defenders, you know, moving his feet. But Cliff can shoot the ball. Uh, I love him around the basket. He's one of the elite big guys. He's improved his game tremendously. His foul shooting will improve this year. I think that'll be the biggest jump in his points per game. But he now has become the number one option. So he's mm -hmm. getting the best defensive, the most attention, and he just keeps improving his stats. And um, we expect him to have a monster year this year. And, uh, uh, and I know he will. So when you bring in a guy like Noel Fernandez, um, take me back to, you know, he enters the portal, you see his name there, and obviously you know what he did to you hitting that game-winning shot. Um, Having him on your side now, seeing him here, what dynamic does he give this team? You know, first of all, great kid. I try to recruit great kids from great families, and he's a great kid from a great family. Um, obviously, he scored 16 and had 11 assists against us, and we could not stop him. Now, I told him Caleb McConnell did not play in that game, so you know he was fortunate <laughs> Remember that that, 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 wasn't, that wasn't the case. But uh, he really... Um, you know, the more film I watched, the more questions I asked, the more people I talked to, the more they kept coming back with great kid, you know, with, from a great family with a great work ethic. And he's come here and done that. He's going to be in the best shape of his life this year. Um, he can really shoot the ball, and he's crafty going to the basket. But he gives us a real veteran presence. He's played in big games. You know, he's been around. He went to Wichita State first, then it's UMass. Mm -hmm. You know, some programs that, have, you know, have done a really, really good job. Played for a lot of different coaches. So I'm excited about having him settle down here um, in Piscataway and have the kind of senior year that he deserves and, and hopefully stay healthy because he wasn't healthy last year for the entire, you know, entire year. He started off the season you know, playing great basketball, then he got hurt. So you know, health is so important to everyone's season, and hopefully he'll keep with his health. He's been in great health. He's been a great addition to us so far. Will the ball be in the hands of Noah, Derek, uh, who will be your primary ball handler? Yeah, yeah, both of those guys. Okay. Jermichael Davis, the most athletic guy in the program out of Georgia, had a great you know uh, tour too. He's really a big time guard going downhill. Uh, but Gavin can bring the ball up. Like I like our ball handling abilities all the way around. And you know, like in the past, I let this guy bring it up. Caleb, I let Derek, Cam, Caleb, Cam, right. Cam, Paul. You know, Paul was our point guard, but he was like guarding forwards. You know, so. Um, I think we have multiple ball handlers, which is great. You always need them. Um, Noah's a pure point guard. So is Derek. Um, and so is Jay Mike. So you got those three. But, you know, Gavin will bring the ball up and give us a different look at that, you know, position too. And uh, I love the improvements of Moat handling the ball and Andre Hyatt handling the ball. And, you know, one of our better ball handlers in the entire program is Antoine Wolfhawk. So he's our five man. He's close. Interesting. And he can play the four spot. So really good ball handler. Handles it, passes it. So, you know, I love that kind of versatility. I like having a lot of different looks. I like having a lot of different options. And like I tell all of them, if you rebound the ball, you're now my point guard. So bring the ball up, gives them incentive to rebound. Cliff can be the point guard? Absolutely. Okay. And he's improved his skills to the point where, Cliff, if you get the rebound, you can bring... You know, you can bring the ball up, too, and that's a credit to, you know, him. Um, I don't know if I want to do that against Rick Pitino's press, um, you know, but, like, you know, that's, that's for another uh, discussion, for another game. That's game strategy. <laughs> no doubt. So, so you, listen, you brought it up, all right? What did it take to put that scrimmage together and have the fans be there, St. John's against Rutgers? I, I think that is awesome. I mean, really... Um, you know, we, we talked earlier about scr uh, scrimmaging, and, you know, a lot of times it's either a closed scrimmage or an open right. scrimmage. You know, and, and, and coaches sometimes want closed scrimmages, try different things, try different lineups, 
you know, the whole nine yards. I, I think, you, you know, Coach Patino, Dick Vitale is, you know, a Rutgers guy. He coached yes. here. Um, Jimmy Valvano, which the money's going to, you know, pediatric, you know, cancer, um, you know, through the Jimmy V Foundation, all that stuff. So there were just a lot of ties to it. And the excitement that, you know, Coach Patino has brought, Hall of Fame coach and, and all that. And, and I'm excited about where our program is. So good opportunity to open the doors, play in front of some live people, too. I wanted some of our younger guys, too, to get that live scrimmage before we play yes. a live game. So that was part of it, and I know he wanted to do the same, but it's really for a great cause. And Dick Vitale is the best and, and, and does so many good things for cancer research and for the Jimmy V Foundation that it's an honor the money raised will go you know, to help somebody. And I think at the end of the day, that's what you really want to do. It's a, it's a win-win all the way around. It's one of the best ideas I've heard of. And like you said, I mean, most of these scrimmages are closed door, and you know who knows who you're scrimmaging and, and the fact that it's out there and putting out money for a great cause, what, what's better than that? So, no, kudos to you, kudos mm -hmm. to Coach Patino, and, and it gets everybody ready mm -hmm. and excited for the season. So, uh, after you, you know, assess your team and you're looking at everything, is there some area of concern right now that you're like, all right, you know what, we, we, you know, we need to get better at this and we're gonna keep drilling this home to these guys? Every area, <laughs> to a basketball coach in September, and okay. I'm just being perfectly honest okay. with you. Um, like I'm scared to death of our defense right now and you know everyone oh, yeah, no, no, it's a different team different personnel you know and if you watch my team practice yesterday um, you'd be really scared about that so um, you know and tomorrow it'll be something different sure. it'll be our shooting our execution our if a coach is telling you right now they feels good about anything then he's probably not you know assessing it we get four hours a week right now so guys are tired guys are you know, and I'm like, we go to 20 hours in a week. So if you're tired at four hours, then you're right. going to be, so get your bodies ready. But, um, you know, um, you got to figure out your team. You got to figure out what your cores are, what, what makes you tick every year. Every year's team is different. Every year's team has a different personality. Every year's team has different leadership. Um, you know, I think we have really good leadership, you know, and, and, and I'm excited about Andre Hyatt, really excited. I mean, I'm excited about Cliff being our leader, Mawat. I'm really excited that Oscar came back because it's always your veterans. Right. You know, I'm excited about our newcomers, but veterans have been through the wars, you know, and, um, you know, tell me we have a good year this year and I'll say our veterans were really good. That's what I'm going to say because I, I kind of know what our young guys are going to do. It starts um, with that. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, I like that core. And then adding Noah, who's a veteran veteran and adding Austin Williams is another guy that, um, you know, came to us in the portal. Um, he's a veteran guy. He led Hartford to an NCAA tournament right. birth, and then he went down to FIU, Florida International, and, and was hurt last year, so he didn't get to play. So he's using his next year with, with us. And, you know, he's a veteran guy, and, and I'm excited. He's athletic as can be. He's downhill. Um, he's rounding himself into shape, too, because he's coming off an injury, too. Um, you know, so how's so, his health? How's Mawat's health? How's the health of the team? I mean, knock on wood, you know, Mawat's been great. Good. He's way ahead in everything. He's practicing. He's, he's you know, do, doing a lot of good things in September, which I'm really excited about. Um, and the health of our team, the guys that have been injured are getting back into the swing of things. And that now's a good time with the four hours and four hours with the strength and conditioning coach to, you know, get them back into game shape. And, you know, like any injury, you like to go get the guy going 25 miles an hour, then get him going 30, then 40, then, you know, and that's what you got to kind of do. And we have a great rehab department here, and Rich does a great job. Rich Campbell's our trainer. Um, they've done a great job of, of getting our guys ready for what's going to happen in November. So I'm hoping we have great health all the way up, and, and, and always that's very important when you have a roster of 13 guys. So Gavin is, at this point, your highest – Recruited, recruited player that's going to be on this roster. Obviously, Ron Harper developed into, you know, an NBA player. Mm -hmm. And Gio, you know, went from low rankings to a star as well. So Gavin comes in here. How is he fitting in? Uh, are you impressed by some of the things that he's doing with the guys on the court? Yeah, I mean, he was, I think, our second leading scorer on our tour to Europe. Um, first of all, he's very athletic at six foot eight, you know, and shoots the ball at the highest level, you know, of, of, of any player we've had, you know, come in as a freshman. So he's a big time three point shooter, but he's very athletic and he can pass the ball. He has a good IQ. He loves to be in the gym. 
Um, he's going to have a fantastic year, and if you know, I think he's one of the top freshmen in the country. I, and he's I, gonna, I agree. He's going to play a lot of minutes, and he's going to be expected to score points, and, and he's ready for that. And uh, you know, and you're be, okay with a freshman being in that situation? You couldn't be more excited about a player that we've had in our program, and than what he brings to the table in so many different ways. But you know, like any freshman, you, you know, college is not easy. You know, and uh, he'll have to fight through some obstacles. But he's very talented, and he loves basketball, watching film, in the gym. Um, very, again, very athletic, you know, very athletic. And that's what people, you know, I think he's been labeled a little bit like he's a shooter, shooter, shooter. No, he's a basketball player, you know, and I'm excited about that. Yeah, I think Rutgers fans are excited about that. I'm excited about it. You know, if you look, whatever, recruiting rankings, whatever they are, I think at the end of the year, if he stays healthy and develops, he will be one of the top freshmen in the Big Ten and in the country and mm -hmm. have a meaningful impact on this team. That's what I expect from him, and, I'm, and it sounds like you are. The yeah, same very, way. certainly. He's going to have a tremendous year. He's really good. So recruiting, I mean, I know you can't talk specifically about players, but let's generalize it, Coach. You know, you've gone from recruiting these, you know, uh, under-recruited players and developing them, and now suddenly Rutgers is involved with, you know, the number one player in the country or the number three player, or whatever the rankings are, and people are saying, wait, Rutgers, come on. I mean, one, could you talk about how you've adapted and changed your recruiting philosophy to go after these guys and not only go after them, but lure them to Rutgers? What's been the change? Uh, I mean, first, we're, we're the top 15 public university in the country. I mean, this place is, first of all, and you're here and you're walking around. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's the rankings just came out. So, Kids come to college to get an education. Top 15 public, a lot of public universities, top 15 Rutgers University. So um, really excited. And that's part of, you know, what we have to sell here. Great university with a tremendous amount of majors that we offer. Um, representation from every state, every country in the world at Rutgers University. In the middle of, we're 45 minutes from New York City. We're a couple hour, hour and a half from Philadelphia. I mean, we're 40 minutes from the best beaches in the world. I mean, this is an outstanding place. And we got the fourth largest alumni network in the country, too. So it's a big university. Um, it's in a huge media market. Um, we sell out every game. Jersey Mike's is rocking. It's one of the top five basketball atmospheres now in the country. And I never worry rankings and all that stuff. Like we, we, Caleb McConnell's the national defensive player of the year for two years. He wasn't, I don't know what his ranking is. He's right. with Oklahoma City Thunder. That's what I do know right now. Um, guys get better that come here. My staff, Brandon Knight, a star. Outstanding. DJ Thompson, a star. Marlon Williamson, a star. Um, I got a great staff um, you know, that, that knows how to develop players. And we have a 100% graduation rate. Every kid that has stayed in our program has graduated. We had eight guys uh, 3.0 or better. We had six guys on the dean's list. Um, kids graduate, they get better, they have fun here. It's a great university. And, you know, everyone, quite honestly, should be interested. And we play in the best league in the country. And we're adding UCLA, USC. Uh, we play in three of the biggest media markets in the country, Chicago, New York, Obviously, Los Angeles. That's what our league is. Um, so it's a really good place. It's a really good place. Yeah. And we've built a winning program that we're going to continue to win. Um, kids are going to continue to get better. We're going to continue to graduate. And if kids want that, we're a place you've got to really come and look at. Yeah, just, just like you've done. You've gotten better at every stop, and you did it at Stony Brook. You're doing it here at Rutgers when so many coaches before you weren't able to do it. So kudos to you. Coach, we wrap up this session of Back to School. One last question. Complete the sentence, this year, Rutgers will be? The best version of Rutgers, and that's NCAA tournament. That's what we expect every year, and fighting for a national championship. Could and everyone graduates, and play exciting basketball in the best arena in the country, Jersey Mike's. The stats are there to prove it. He just, they just spewed out of his mouth like, like he was recruiting me out here, and I wish I <laughs> had some eligibility back in the day, but you know what? I wasn't good enough to play here, so <laughs> that's that. So, Coach, uh, thank you for uh, taking us here and bringing us uh, to your office and your, your beautiful view here at the Rutgers Performance Athletic Center. I appreciate it. I appreciate the time. it. Thanks for coming. Thanks for taking the time. All right. That is the edition here, the episode of Back to School on Tri-State College Basketball Podcast. My name is Brian DiNovellis. Subscribe to us. Tell your friends about it. Until next time, I thank you for listening. Watch the entire interview 
on my YouTube channel, Brian D. Novellis, or listen to it on podcasts, wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, Apple, Spotify, wherever you can get it. I'm Brian D. Novellis. Until next time, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching the Tri-State College Basketball Podcast.